hello guys this is code in code and this is first lecture of this mini series where we are going to study ben Mel uh, bellman ford algorithm sorry for our uh, triple sp that is single source shortest path so the question before we begin what is triple sp most of you already know just for just for reminder triple sp stands for single source shortest path that is you are given a node in a graph and uh, which is a source node of course and you have to find the distance of uh, the shortest distance of all the other nodes from this source node and this problem is known as triple sp or single source shortest path so we have already seen dijkstra's algorithm which runs in uh analog and time now in this lecture we are going to study bellman ford algorithm now of course for an example if this was an input graph then this would be its graph uh, this would be the shortest distance marked of all of the nodes where source node is node 1 now the question is if we already know Dijkstra's algorithm which runs in analog and time now why do we need to learn other algorithms uh, the n log n time complexity that I'm telling you is, is for tree and of course the Dijkstra's algorithm for graph depends upon uh, the complexity depends upon the number of nodes as well as number of edges so make, uh, uh, make sure that you already know the time complexity of a Dijkstra's algorithm but we are not here to discuss that but the problem that we are discussing here is this the problem that lies with Dijkstra's and the problem with, which is there with Dijkstra and because of that we are moving from Dijkstra's to Bellman Ford algorithm and that problem is negative cycle uh, negative weight cycle so a cycle as you can see here in the directed graph we are having cycle and the the total weight of the cycle is negative that is this uh, this cycle is having negative weight the when we say the weight of the cycle we mean the sum of all of the edges of the cycle so if you take the sum you are gonna get minus 3 5 plus 2 minus 10 is minus 3 so the overall weight of the cycle is minus 3 and that is why this is a negative weight cycle if this was like minus 1 then this would not be a negative weight cycle so the problem with negative weight cycle is this with Dijkstra's algorithm you start from the source node of course its distance from it is zero and these two are for now are initialized with my uh, infinity the distance of these two now you see this node is at distance zero so this node can be reached from source in zero plus five that is five distance so the shortest path from source to this is five now from here you can reach this node in 5 plus 2 7 because the distance of this node from source is 5 so the distance of this would be 5 plus 2 7 right now you see from here you can reach the source node in 7 minus 10 that is minus 3 uh, the basically in minus 3 unit of distance so the distance of source node from source node using this path is minus 3 so what has happened here is that because of the negative weight cycle the distance of source has reduced from 0 to neg negative distance and now the same cycle would go on again and again this would reduce the distance of uh, this node initial distance of this node was 5 from source now since source is at distance minus 3 so you can take this path so minus 3 plus 5 is going to be 2 so this node is going to be at distance 2 so this would keep on happening so this would become 2 this would uh, yeah this would become 2 this would become 4 and this would become minus 6 and so on this would keep on going because the weight the the distance of each node from sources keep on decreasing if it keep on decreasing Dijkstra is not gonna stop and it would keep on doing and doing and doing until the overall distance is minus infinity even then it is not going to stop so that is the problem with Dijkstra's algorithm it it fails to detect the presence of a negative weight cycle and of course it if there exists a negative weight cycle then the running time would be infinity basically this would not terminate the Dijkstra's algorithm will not terminate so this is one of the most important drawback of Dijkstra's algorithm and that is why we are moving to Bellman Ford algorithm 
So the Bellman Ford algorithm can be used to find, of course, triple SV that is single source shortest path. So the purpose of this algorithm is same as the Dijkstra's algorithm, but it comes with the fact that Dijkstra's oh, sorry Bellman Ford algorithm can be used to find the presence of cycle, or basically presence of negative weight cycle. So it can detect that there exists there exists at least one negative weight cycle in the given graph and also this algorithm can be modified to actually find the cycle here it is only detecting that there exists a negative weight cycle here we can actually modify by a uh, bellman ford algorithm to find the actual cycle actual negative weight cycle so bellman ford algorithm can be used for these things so now the question is in this mini series what we are going to cover of course first we'll be covering bellman ford algorithm in very detail like we'll be studying the theory the proof of correctness that why this algorithm actually works which most people don't tell you a proof of correctness and of course the implementation and then we'll study the detection of negative weight cycle and finding the negative weight cycle basically in this we'll be printing the uh, the cycle which is having the negative weight here we will only tell whether the negative weight cycle exists or not and of course after that uh, only going for theory is not enough you need to solve two or three problems so we'll be doing that as well so that is what we'll be covering in this mini series for directors oh uh, sorry i keep on saying directors algorithm this is bellman for if i have said earlier uh directors in place of bellman's for i'm sorry for that so now let me tell you what is bellman for algorithm in some simple words so first of all it is all about friendly neighborhood edges so you are given suppose certain input graph and uh that bellman for algorithm actually is some of those algorithm one of those algorithm in which storing the graph in edge list is better than storing in any other form because we are going to traverse the edges one by one in two uh and minus one phases so we have this input graph we have this edge list i just this is just a list of all of the edges and then this is this array would represents the distance of all node from the source node source node is assumed to be node a here so let's start and let me tell you how this goes now in the previous slide you have seen it is all about friendly neighborhood edges so what happens is that each edge tries to, to uh, relax the weight or the distance of some node so basically if there is an edge like ed this edge ed would try to relax the weight or the distance of node D from the source. This basically helps node D to reduce or to find its minimum distance from the source. Now what happens? There are n minus 1 phases. In each phase you are going to traverse the whole edge list, right? And each edge tries to relax the distance from source to uh, if the edge is of form xy then xy edge would try to uh, relax the distance of node y from the source and how does it do that let me tell you so this is phase one initially the distance of node a is zero because this is the source node sorry and the distance of all of the other node is initialized with infinity 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 indicates the uh, that these nodes are currently unreachable so now phase one will traverse all of the edges one by one the first edge is ed ed tries to uh, relax the distance of d from source but the problem is e itself is unreachable for now so this edge can't be used for relaxation similarly for b uh, b e because b is unreachable similarly for bd because b is unreachable again d b c b b c all of these edges cannot be used for relaxation because all of these nodes are actually unreachable for now but these two edges can be used so now currently we are on ac now you see a is actually reachable because distance of a is not infinity so we can use this edge ac we can use this edge ac to find or reduce the distance of c from source node so distance of a is zero using this edge we can you we can reach node c in zero plus four four unit of distance so 
we'll see the distance of c can be covered in four units of distance four is smaller than infinity so of course its distance would be reduced so basically we have found this path oh uh, sorry i'm talking about ac so we have found this path now because of this we are able to relax now let's go for the last edge ab now a is again reachable so this edge can be used for relaxation so distance of b the updated distance of b would be minimum of infinity comma uh distance of a plus this edge so distance of a is zero plus this edge is minus one so minus one minimum of minus one comma infinity is of course minus one so this would be relaxed with minus one so basically you have found a path from a to b now after phase one we have distances of a b and c remember sorry remember the distance that you are seeing here after phase one may or may not be the optimal distance because in fact for c you can see ac uh if you go direct if you look at this path this is of distance four but you can take this path as well a b and b c and this is of length only two right so this is not the optimal distance optimal distance only you will get after n minus one phases so the first phase is complete now let's go for the second phase now this is not the different array this is the same distance array i'm just uh, keeping the instance of previous phases as well so that you can see the distance i mean difference this is actually the same distance array now phase two phase two again you would start from here uh choosing ed you try to relax the distance of d but e is actually unreachable so ed can't be used be yes be can be used because b is now reachable so distance of b from source is minus one and distance of e would be be sorry distance from source to b and b to e right so distance from source to b is minus one and b to e is two so minus one plus two is one so of course distance of e is going to be one because this distance of e is minimum of infinity comma minus one plus two which is one so of course one is smaller than infinity so it would be updated to one now this edge again this can be used because b is actually reachable so basically distance of b is not infinity so now distance of d would be updated to two plus minus one which is one so distance of d would be updated to one now i'm assuming that you are understanding what is happening here because this is easy to understand so again we would uh, continue we have done these edges now for this db d is reachable so distance of b can be updated to minimum of minus one comma one plus one right one plus one is two minimum of minus one comma two is minus one so this distance would not be affected now dc again distance of c is four and distance through d using this edge would be distance of d plus edge weight of dc which is one plus five is six but distance of c is already four which is smaller than six so this would not be updated now bc b is at distance minus one so using this edge minus one plus three is going to be two distance of two can uh, c can be updated distance of c currently is four and distance uh, using this edge we can relax the distance of c which would be two so this would be updated to two because minus one plus three is two so distance of c is two so basically what you have found here is this path distance via b using bc edge. so you have found this path of length two after you go to ac nothing would happen because a uh, distance of c is reduced to two and of course zero plus four is not smaller than two and zero minus one is not smaller than minus one so nothing would happen phase two is finished now we'll, uh, how many phases there would be if there are n nodes there will be n minus one phases now the question is why we are having n minus one phases this i'll be explaining in the next lecture where i'll be presenting you the proof of correctness of bellman ford algorithm so this is in a nutshell the algorithm how it goes you have n minus one phases in each phase you try to you traverse the whole edge list and then you try to relax the distances and the relaxation happens the same way as i have explained here now let's go for the third phase in third phase again you would start from here now what you do uh, you try to uh, that use edge 
ED since E is reachable now so this edge can be used the distance of D currently is 1 so using this edge the new distance of D can be minus 3 plus 1 which is minus 2 current distance is 1 and minus 2 is smaller than 1 so of course it would be updated to minus 2 now BE or uh, distance of B is currently minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 is 1 so distance of E can be updated to 1 which is already 1 so nothing would change here in fact in this phase this is the only change you can go through all of this and this is the only change and now in the fourth phase there will uh, there would be nothing that would change so after that you are here and in fourth phase there is nothing that would change so this is the final distance array now the question is we haven't talked about how to find the presence of the negative weight cycle right that i'll be explaining in a different lecture so i'm going to stop here so in the next lecture what we will be looking at first of all what we have studied in this lecture you already know that how bellman ford algorithm works this is very very easy all you have to have is a edge list and then perform n minus one edges at max n minus one edges it is even possible that you don't have to perform more than one phase at all uh, we'll be seeing we'll be seeing in the next lecture how we can do that at max you need to perform n minus one phases in each phase you traverse through your edge list and try to relax the these nodes right the distance of these nodes so this is bellman ford algorithm the complexity of this is n times e where n is the number of node e is the number of edges so yeah this is all about it in the next lecture i'll be presenting you the proof of correctness of bellman ford algorithm and also the implementation of it i'll be running uh, an example and showing you how bellman ford algorithm works so this was uh yeah and now let's talk about the Unacademy initiative for competitive programming. So Unacademy has launched a competitive programming course where you get these perks. First, you get to learn from the experts. Experts are like the guys who are IOI medalists and ICPC finalists and the guys who, are, who have worked with companies like Google and Microsoft and companies, companies like that. All of the courses are well structured and you get to get live sessions where you can interact with the TAs and if you have any doubt you can ask them and there and there make sure that your doubt is clear and of course uh, there are many you can get the subscription and the subscriptions are of one month six month and 12 month and as you can see if you use my code you get 10 percent off on six or 12 month course or subscription but for one month when you need to try initially it is like uh, 6000 but when you apply the code uh, you get to get the one month subscription only for 999 so if you want to check out whether uh, the subscription of this competitive programming course provided by an academy is worth investing your money or not of course you can always go for the one month subscription so if you really want to invest your money for competitive programming and you want to learn from experts and you have and you can afford you can go with you can go with first one month subscription and if you like the, the way they are teaching and you are able to understand things of course you can go for the for the uh, six or twelve month subscription so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you